Our activist Nagi Rashad is the man who brought the case to court and won. He was at Sunday's rally calling on the Egyptian government to implement the court ruling. This is the first time in 22 years I am celebrating Labor Day on the street. This is the celebration we've been dreaming of for years. Workers from various factories are united with one demand to implement Court Ruling 21606 for the government to set a minimum living wage. In Detroit, a federal judge has ordered nine members of an armed Christian militia to be freed while awaiting trial. The members of the Hutteri militia were arrested as part of an alleged plot to spark a war against the federal government. The Justice Department has accused the members of the Hutteri militia of planning on killing a law enforcement officer and then bombing the funeral procession. A prominent star in Major League Baseball has come out publicly against the new anti-immigrant law in Arizona. San Diego Padres hitter Adrian Gonzalez is threatening to boycott next year's All-Star Game if the law is still in effect. The law allows police officers to stop and interrogate anyone they suspect is an undocumented immigrant. Gonzalez is a dual citizen of Mexico and the United States. He said, quote, it goes against what this country was built on. This is discrimination. Are they going to pass out a picture saying you should look like this and you're fine, but if you don't, do people have the right to question you? That's profiling, he said. The Supreme Court has unanimously ruled that federal health officials cannot be sued over the death of an immigrant who died after being denied medical care while in immigrant detention. The case centers on the treatment of Francisco Castaneda, an immigrant from El Salvador. Castaneda was held in detention for 11 months and repeatedly requested a biopsy of his groin, but doctors with the U.S. Public Health Service refused the procedure. He later died at the age of 36. Gabriel Eber of the American Civil Liberties Union said, quote, with today's decision, the Supreme Court has unfortunately closed the door on an important avenue of accountability for the gross mistreatment that immigration detainees across the country have suffered. In other immigration news, New York Governor David Patterson has announced a new effort to help prevent longtime legal immigrants from being deported for old or minor criminal convictions. Patterson plans to create a five-member special immigration board of pardons to review cases such as Ching Hong Wu, who was recently profiled in The New York Times. Wu is a 29-year-old information technology executive who's been threatened with deportation because he participated in a series of muggings as a 15-year-old. He'd not lived in his native China since he was five. Patterson said, quote, some of our immigration laws, particularly with respect to deportation, are embarrassingly and wrong, wrongly inflexible. In New York, we believe in renewal. In New York, we believe in rehabilitation, the governor said. At least 28 people have died in Tennessee, Mississippi and Kentucky following a weekend of record rainstorms. Hardest hit was Nashville, Tennessee, where the Cumberland River rose more than 32 feet after the region received more than 13 inches of rain. Thousands of people have been forced from their homes. Country music's landmark, the Grand Old Opry House, was flooded with several feet of water. Half the counties in Tennessee have been declared disaster areas. And Reporters Without Borders has issued its list of predators of press freedom to mark World Press Freedom Day. The group described the list as, quote, 40 politicians, government officials, religious leaders, militias, and criminal organizations that cannot stand the press, treat it as an enemy, and directly attack journalists. Names on the list include Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin, Chinese President Hu Jintao, the Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, and the Israeli military and the IDF. The Israel Defense Forces. Just days before the list was released, the Israeli military blocked a crew from the TV network Al Jazeera from covering a Palestinian rally in the West Bank village of Bilin. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Sharif Abdokadir.